Okay, so today's daf is daf Mem Ches from Baba Kama as we learn for Achim Kol Beis Tishon Asim Batzar Veshivya. We're a little bit past the halfway point down on Mem Ches Menal at the two dots right below uh, the beginning of the Tosfos Dibre Masel Betinfu Kelov. So <clears throat> Mishnah had said that if you brought your shore into somebody else's chutzir, you're responsible if it does damage, right? Ichnis Shoro Mishnah had said if you brought your shore into uh, somebody else's property, and uh, they did damage without permission. They did damage. Of course, you have to pay. And if your if your shore was damaged there, uh, the shore of the Balabai is damaged. You're a bit it. That's uh, you know it's not, not his responsibility. You brought your shore in there without permission. Amarava. So the Gemara is like this. Amarava hichnis shoro lechutz Balabai shlobashus. Ruven bought his shore into Shimon's chutz without permission. The the animal dug there. You know, some animals dig their feet in and they start, you know, getting the dirt out. So he dug there a pit or a ditch or a cave. He dug something there. Bala shore Obviously, you brought Reuben brought his shore into Shimon's property and damaged the property. He has to pay. Ubal chotzer Whoa, whoa! The owner of the chotzer is chayiv if the boar. That Reuben, in other words, Shimon, listen yeah. carefully, Shimon is chayiv for damage that his boar did, and the boar was dug by Reuben's, by Reuben's shore. This seems strange. This seems strange. So Rashi tells us right away, that's only if after Reuben's shore dug the boar, Shimon was mafker his whole area. He was mafki, made it hefker. Ah, that's different. Rashi yes, says, <clears throat> Rashi a little bit above, about halfway down on the page. Right? If he was mafkir, it's rishus. He was mafkir. And then the Gemara goes on back. The Gemara says, If a man digs a pit in the street below shore bore, not if a shore dig, if a shore, if your shore dug a pit in the rishus arabim, you you know, we dug a pit there and walked away. You're not chayiv. You're only chayiv if you dug a pit there. But over here, he dug the pit in my property. Now, if it's in, he dug the pit in my property and then somebody fell in there, well, it's his, he did the damage, right? The animal did the damage or the owner of the Reuben, the owner of that shore should have done, should have, uh, done something about it. But over here, it's speaking about after he dug the boar and now it was in Shimon's Rishos, Shimon was now Mafker the Rishos, made it Hefker. Before he made it hefker, he should have made sure that there were no uh, nothing there that could do damage. There were no uh, obstacles there, and that's what happened over here. Keeping this lady looking, since he should have filled it up and he didn't. Come on, he said, "Well, I didn't dig it. Fine, but you shouldn't have made it hefker. If you have a takali in your rishus, you have an obstacle there. You shouldn't have made it hefker for people now to get damaged." The so That's an interesting point. That not 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 as you might think. It's not as simple as you might say. Again. When Reuben brought his shore into Shimon's property without permission, but he said, Guess Balabais, and he damaged Reuben, or Balabais, who's Zakbo, or Reuben tripped on him, or whatever. He tripped on something. He brought his shore in there, and whatever he did damage to the to Reuben, or uh, either he did damage directly, or Reuben uh, tripped on him, or something, Chayev. So obviously, Reuben is Chayev. I mean, Shimon tripped on him, then Reuben is Chayev. Again, Reuben brought his shore into Shimon's property. He hurt Shimon in some way, either directly or Shimon tripped on him. Then Reuben's chayv to pay. Rabbats, listen to this. But if he crouched, he lay down. If Reuben sure lay down, then he's potter. Why should he be potter? Doesn't even assume the rabbit's potter. If my animal, you brought your animal to my property and he went to sleep there, he lay down and we tripped on it on him. Why should you be potter? You brought an obstacle in my rishos. I'm rapapa. My rabbit shehir bitz gololam means this. That the animal, uh, the animal relieved himself, and dung that he left in nitfu kela shel bala bias. What happened over here was the animal uh, relieved himself, and when he relieved himself, he uh, he soiled the, uh, the 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 garments or kalem of of the bala bias afterwards. That's why you're potter. Meaning what what does it mean? <coughs> if an animal comes in, you bring your animal to my rishus, and he hurts me. Or somebody tripped on him, or <clears throat> or he defecated right onto something and ruined it. Then you're responsible for it. You were right there. 
Here we're speaking about where the animal relieved himself and he left the dung there, which means it's like a boar. And he left it there. And later on, later on, the uh, owner of the son's property, uh, got ruined. That's what we mean over here. <coughs> Rashi says, afterwards, only the Kalim, your potter. If your animal left dung in my property and I tripped on and I got hurt, you're responsible. But if my Kalim got hurt by it, I'm potter. Why? Why? Uh, because you're, you're right there. But over here, the Kalim, it's like you left a born my Rishus. You left a born my Rishus. Shor below, shor below uh, Adam Chamor below Kalim. A boar is only chayiv if it damaged a person or uh, if it damaged a person or killed an animal. Uh, but if it uh, but if it ruined Kalim, Kalim means any property that you own that's not an animal, uh, then uh, you're potter. Right? So, my Rosh Hashir is glow, and it will kill the Glalim boar, the Glalim, the dung is now a boar. Boars <coughs> are chayev, but it's a kalim. Boars are chayev, so I need to shmo. That's good according to shmo. The Amar called to call a boar. Any time you put an obstacle down, that's a boar. El Rav Damar Achim Afker Mike Lemeimer. Remember Rav? Rav, we had that cheated before back in the first pack. Rav holds that the only time it's a boar is if it's hefker. Here you weren't the, the animal that uh, that relieved himself there. Well, how is that hefker? I'm yes. Stam Glalim Afkeri Makul. Most people. If the animal is uh, uh, the animal relieves himself, the dung is hefker. Nobody's uh, you know, they should clean it up, right? If they're in public street, those are the laws now. But basically, it's considered hefker, and therefore, therefore, it's saying. So here's his point. His point is there are two two things that Rav has said so far that are interesting. And obviously, you come into my rishus and you damage me, you hurt me. Fine. But the first thing was is that if your animal dug a pit and then in my property. And if he dug a pit and he hurt something in my property, either somebody fell into it, not killed, but uh, if he damaged a person or an animal got killed in it, he's responsible, right? Responsible because uh, it's it's my property. Whatever he did, he's uh, it's he can't. He, it's like ever. But if I mock if I'm Shimon, if I mock it, it's my responsibility. And secondly, if the animal dropped uh, dro uh, dropped uh, glolim in the in my property and later on. Uh, my kalim got ruined thereby. Shor v'labor chavar v'lokalim. The Reuben, the Reuben, the owner of the animal, the uh, the animal that was came into Shimon's property is part of the pay. Yomarava, another halacha that he said in the first of the wide lines. Yomarava, nichlas lechazar v'al baish l'abashus. Again, you came into, you came in. Didn't say nichlas hechnas shoro. The other ones are hechnas shoro. Here, a man himself, Reuben came into Shimon's property. Vizik is v'al and he hurt him. He damaged him in some way. And again, if you damage them in some way directly, it makes no difference if you were intentional or not. You're always responsible. Or the owner himself uh, tripped on him or something of that sort. Right? He tripped on him. Um, that's what Huzik, he got, he didn't, you know, he didn't hand, uh, Reuben did not physically damage Shimon with his own hands, but he caused him damage, like he tripped on him. Chayev. Then Reuben's Chayev. His Zico Balabayas, if the owner, Reuben, Damaged Shimon, he's Potter. Amar Papa, Loaman El Loyot In other words, Shimon came into Ruben's property in the middle of the night, and Shimon ran into Ruben, hurt Ruben, or Ruben didn't see him and he tripped on him. Shimon's responsible. If Ruben damaged Shimon, he's not responsible. Says for Papa, that's true, but it's only if Ruben didn't recognize that he was there. And as Ruben, I didn't know that you came in my property and I bumped into you and hurt you. But if he knew about it, he's he's equal. I said, if I knew that he was there, even though he was even though he was trespassing, he had no permission to be in there. But if I knew he was there, I have no permission to hurt him. Right? My time, Mishim to Amalei, because Shimon could say, You have permission to throw me out. It's your property. You have, you have no permission to hurt me. In other words, if you if you want to uh, if you want to eject me, evict me, then you have permission to do that, but you can't take a gun and shoot me. Bazal Tamaya Rabban Rapapa, who say these this idea that if a person comes in without Rashus, does any damage, he's Chayev. Whereas if the owner hurt him and the owner didn't realize he was there, he's Potter. Bazal Tamaya Dam Rabban, he tamed Rapapa, Rabban and Rapapa both say that Shneim Rashus, if two people are both have permission to be there. For example, it's a Chatzar of Shutman or it's Rashus Aram, but they both permission. Oh, Shneim Shlobushus, so they're both running in Rashus Aram, let's say. They have no permission to do that. 
is ikus asem. If they damage one another, chayavin. Whose scoop is have is turn. But if they got hurt, meaning one tripped on the other, then you're putter, your own, your chayav, even if you was, even if the damage you did was unintentional, if you did it directly. But if the other guy tripped on you and they both had permission to be there, they're potter. Time at a shame bashus or shame bashus because they both had permission or they both didn't have permission. They're both equal. If one had permission, one didn't have permission, the bashus potter, the one who's there with permission, he is potter. Again, that's, let's say, Ruben's property. Uh, Ru, uh, Ruben came into Shimon's property. Ruben was trespassing. Shimon had permission to be there. So if Shimon hurt Ruben unintentionally, he's potter. Shalom Rishus, but the one who was there without Rishus, like Ruben, who trespassed onto Shimon's property, he's chayev, even if he didn't do the damage directly, but the other guy tripped on him, he's responsible. Now for labor. So we said, if this was, goes back to the case of Nagahu Shor Shabbat is chayev, now, this is speaking of a case that uh, the Mishnah says, it's talking about a case where you brought your shore again. Reuben brought a shore into the Chatzar of Shimon, and Shimon's uh, animal gored him or bit him, Potter. If he, if he gored Shimon's, then obviously he's high because he was trespassing. Let's say your animal, your shore, Reuben's shore, fell into a pit, and the pit wasn't a pit, it was a well. He had water in there. So the Mishnah Nafal Aboro Behivish may and he he fouled up the smelled up the uh the he ruined the water that was in there. Chayef to pay. Nafal Bar Behivish may mov chayef. That's what the Mishnah said. Nafal Bar Behivish may mov chayef. Okay. So now Amar Rav Loshen Al Shehivish Bishas the Pila. At the time that he fell in there, he he ruined it. He ruined the water. In other words, he was dirty. The animal was dirty. Ruined the water. Aval Achin Afila. But let's say didn't happen when he fell in. The animal was clean. Maybe the animal died in there, and after he fell in, and when he died, he started to stink, and that stunk up the water. Potter, he doesn't have to pay. My time, huh? have a shore bore, because this shore has now become an obstacle, right? By falling in there, the shore is, the shore is, is now a bore. He's an obstacle. Umayim kalim. Umayim is kalim. Water can be kalim. Rashi says, yes, anything. Kol chafetzim kalim. All your items are kalim except for animals. But any inanimate object that you own, including water, is kalim. So if the animals are born, in other words, if he fell in, when he fell in, he ruined it. Okay, he did, the, he did it directly. What is the characteristic of boar that you make an obstacle and later on somebody, uh, it, it, ruins up, it ruins somebody later on, it hurts somebody later on. Well, this shore is now a boar. Shore himself has become a boar. Mine came, lo masina boar, shechai v'sim so he says, Rabbi says, it's only, the Mishnah says that your chayib is only if he ruined the water when he fell in, but not if he uh, if he smelled it later on. And, you know, he, he, he damaged it later on because he stunk. Um, right? <clears throat> so the Gemara now says, Any obstacle is a bor. Again, you have this question, I'm going also. Rabbi holds that bor is only if you're mafkar. Here the end of the guy with the uh, room and the owner is not mafkar his... Uh, his shore there in Shimon's property, Michael Neymar, Eli Itmar, Hochi Itmar. This is what Rubba must have meant to say. It's only if he got damaged, if he smelled up the water by his body that was dirty. But if he got smelled up from his smell because he stunk, in other words, if the animal ruined the water directly, as soon as he fell in, he ruined it. It got dirty and all that from there. Then you're Chayev. But if it's from the smell, Lav Gufa Yerasha says this sirchon and avelim amela osile. Just the smell, you know, the smell ruined it over time. That's considered a grum and a grum of a zik and a spotter. Of course, spotter of a loser, maybe chayv ne shemayim. Hayo ben el tochu misham zikof. Now let's listen to this. This is really complicated. You brought your animal. Shimon brought Reuben brought his animal into Shimon's property, and he fell into a boar. And Shimon had some people in the boar, and he killed he killed the person in the boar. That's the mission. Hayo ben el tochu. Mishal is a kofer, you pay kofer. Now, if you look back on Memdalad Amid Beis, we have there that when do you pay kofer? If your animal kills, not a person, but if your animal kills, if he's a mu'ed, then he's high of the misa, and he did it intentionally. If he did it intentionally, we said, mu'ed b'kabani, high misa and kofer. Mu'ed shalab b'kabani, high kofer, patam misa, if he did it without kavana. So over here, presumably, we're speaking about where he did it without kavana, because you say you're high of kofer. For killing the person in the bar. Tom Bikabana is Chai Misan Patami Kofer. Tom Shlobikabana Patami Zebza. In other words, the idea is that a Tom doesn't pay Kofer. 
So what's going on over here? Is this what, what kind of an animal is this? You say if, you, if your animal fell uh, fell into the pit and killed you know, a relative or somebody in the pit, you pay kofar for killing him. Bamai hatamu. He's a tam. Tom doesn't pay call for it. We said Tom, if he did it intentionally, is killed. If he did it, uh, if he did it unintentionally, he's not killed. But either way, he doesn't pay call for it. He's a muay lipo up an animal for us. In other words, it's very common for him to fall. And he sees a person in a boar and he falls in there and kills him. Askina. The muay lipo up an animal for us. Askina. So we're speaking about a muay. That's why you pay call for it. We're not speaking about Tom. So if he does it all the time, Intentionally, in other words, he that's what he that's what he does, he should be killed. The animal should be killed, and meaning he should have been killed in a field of Kamaisa. That's what he does all the time. The animal the animal sees a guy in the pit, he jumps in there on top of him. So the first he did it with Kavan, he should have been killed the first time. How did he become a muid for this kind of thing? And actually points out you can't say, like we said before, remember we said, Oh, how was he a muid? He should have been killed the first or the second time. Well, every time the owner took him and he ran with him into the forest or into the swamp and he ran away from from the court, they couldn't kill him, right? Because he has to be killed by a court. Here, it's not a court, it, it fell into a pit, couldn't get out, you know, it wasn't that simple. It wasn't like you could take him out, they fell into a pit and presumably the animal itself is also injured, right? So uh, how can you give those answers? Well, well as, as the Milsa did, as you would hear about it if, if uh, nobody knew the who's one of us. It has all the answers that we gave before, because of Arkin, I'm going to shame my curious, they especially didn't recognize him, I'm sure who's one of I will say, all of them are going people would have known about it. So how did this animal become a muay? He should have been killed. If he, if, he, if he always did this, every time he saw a person on a board, he would jump in and kill him. So he, the animal itself the should word, have been killed. What, what, what is that? Uh -uh. Yeah, okay. So so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. It says, uh laboro. Sometimes it's lobbed off, you know, he fell into the pit. That's what more first is. But you'll see in a minute that it doesn't, that it's, it's, it's a little bit different. You're, you're right. It, it, that's a good point. But the Gemara asks a better kasha, like, you know, we should have been killed. Well, how do you get around that? Or Rabbi say, the chazi yuruk of enough. What happened was this. Whenever the animal sees um, <clears throat> vegetation that he wants to eat in a pit, that's when he, he goes in to get the vegetation and then he falls. And he falls. That's what he's a muay for. He's a mu'e for eating. He's a mu'e for eating. In other words, he sees vegetation in a pit, he jumps in there, and then he killed the person. So therefore, what is he? Rashi says he's really a tolda of shame. He wants to eat. An animal is a mu'e for shame. And we learned before that when you're high of kofr, it's not only like you damage with horn like shore. Even shane a rego, you said before, if a rego, if you have if, if, uh, let's say an animal comes into somebody else's rishus, Right, uh, even even with uh, even with permission, the steacher he went to steacher and he killed the baby there by stepping on him. It's chayiv kofer, right? It's chayiv kofer. Why chayiv kofer? He didn't kill with the shor. He didn't kill intentionally, but he killed. Intentionally means that you chayiv the animals chayiv misa, but he's but kofer you chayiv even shlobe kaban as we saw back in memdalit. So Rabbi Yosef the chazi ruka benafal. Every time he saw York, he was a muet for that. There's a long Rashi here. The Rashi is the Chazi Ruka Esav Al Piyah Bar Velu Bal Echol V'Nafal. The Hach Nafil Lo Chavan. He wasn't fall. He didn't fall down on purpose. This answers your question, Michael. He didn't really jump in there. He fell. But what happened was, every time he would see food, he would go after it, and the animal wasn't that bright, and he fell. In. Every time he saw food in a pit, he would jump in there. And and Hach Nafil Lo Chavan. He didn't come. Umiu Kofer Shlo B'Kavon Mishalim Mishalim V'Nafil Lo Chavan. But that's he, he would pay. Even though you don't kill the shore. And the same thing would be, we're talking about here, he's, he brings down Shmiel Arab, that was a potem, he says, eh, that's by a mood on a gichos, and he took him away and all that. So you say, if you can't kill the shore, you don't uh, pay kofar either. But over here, this is a case of shame or rego. It's a shame in this case, but shame or rego, you pay kofar, you pay kofar, even though there was no intention to kill. The animal was just, what's the characteristic of shame that he was trying to get his own Hanoi, he was hungry. Characters of regular, he's just walking along and he killed somebody. Fine. You have the Chayev Kofor Bishus Anizik. That's when a Shane Regal's Chayev. And that's what happened over here, too. The animal did not intend to kill, he intended to eat, but he was a Mu'ate for that. He was a Mu'ate for, uh, for falling into a pit whenever he saw food. So that's what happened over here. 
So again, the mission is the animal's not killed because he didn't intend to kill. Shmuel says no. Very simple. Your question was, why does a cope, why does a tom pay? The animal's a tom and he killed. Why would he? And the answer was a tom. He's not a muay. He doesn't do this normally. But, he, but still, even though he killed unintentionally, no fall, like you say, pays chatsi kofer. So when you say you pay kofer, he means chatsi kofer. That's what Shmuel's answer is. Ula Amar, Ula says it goes like a bell to the Amar Kriptak, and he also Kriptak, and the Amar Karen the Chatsar Nizik, Nezik Shalom and Shalom. He's not Chayv Awir for Bor or Shane or Regal. This is Karen. He killed. But the Chatsar Nizik, he pays Nezik Shalom. Achanami Kofer Shalom and Shalom pays the Kofer also. So Bishlam Ula Ula. According to Ula, this last opinion that says it goes like a basically Hanikani Haya Ovik O Haya Ovik Ovno Litoho. The last opinion of Ula, right? That says that 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 you pay her. Why? Why do you say Ovik Ovno? Could have been anybody there. Why do you say could have been his worker, could have been anybody there to, to emphasize that it's that he would have been Chayev in any case, because it's the Chatzar and Isaac. He says uh, Karen Bachatzar and Isaac, Nezik Shalom Mishalain. Even if it's not Shane or Bohr or, or Regal or anything else, he's do, doing damage. So therefore you say, it, emphasizing it's father or the son to show that it's Chatzar HaNizik, right? That it's Chatzar HaNizik, because Karen, Chatzar HaNizik, meaning that his father of it was, was in the pit. And it, it, that's not so I mean he fell on top. He, yeah, he fell in there, but he damaged him, on, damaged him with his, uh, with his, um, uh, with his uh, Karen. And because of that, Kofer Mishal, just like you say, Bechotzer and Isaac, Nezik Shalom Mishalim, Kofer, Hachanami Kofer Shalom Mishalim, because it's Bechotzer and Isaac. So the idea is he mentioned that it's the father or the son, they'll tell me that it's it's in his Chotzer. Ava, uh, 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 Ella, the Shmuel, but according to Shmuel, it says, oh, yeah, we're talking really about a Tom, right? We're talking about a Tom. Rabbi Yossi Gali said, uh, Rabbi Yossi Gali said, uh, Karen Bachatzer and Isaac pays Asik Shalom. So, idea of the father, the son is to emphasize this is Chatzar and Isaac. El Shmuel, but according to Shmuel, that says, oh, it's going like um, uh, Shmuel says that's Rabbi Yossi Aglili, uh, the Amr Tam Mishal and Chatzi Kofer, not the Rabbi Yossi Aglili, the Amr Kerb Tarfan, not that uh, Ulus is Rabbi Yossi Aglili, the Amr Kerb Tarfan, the Amr Karen Chatzar and Isaac. He says, like Rabbi Yossi Aglili says, the Tam is Mishal and Chatzi Kofer. So, no matter where he would be, he would pay the Chatzi Kofer. If a Tom kills, he pays Chatsi Kofer no matter what. So uh, even if it was unintentional, he pays Chatsi Kofer. Whoever it is. In other words, the idea of Acher means even if it's not in the Rishus of the Nizik, even if it's in the Rishus of Rabbim, if a Tom kills somebody, pays Chatsi Kofer. The answer is Anachanami. But Urchan and Milsik Tani says he, since he started talking about that he went into, Reuven went into Shimon's Rishus, so he talked about probably he damaged. Ruvain's uh, father or his son, but the idea is the truth is wherever he did the damage. Uh, if a if he fell into a pit and he damaged with his uh, horn, let's say, and he said that the Tom always pays chatsi kofer, pays chatsi kofer no matter what. Not like we saw back on Membov that a Tom doesn't pay uh, that a Tom is either killed or not killed, but he doesn't pay kofer. There we said that. Um, uh, th- uh, that Tam bechavana chay misu pot mikofer Tam shlo bechavana pot mizem mizem. Not like this opinion of Rabbi Yosef Glili that Tam pays chatsi kofer. And the truth is, he pays chatsi kofer. It doesn't make any difference where it would be. Rabbi Yosef Glili, the other opinion is he goes like Rabbi Tarfon. You say Rabbi Yosef Glili goes like Rabbi Tarfon. Rabbi Tarfon is one who says that that a shore or Karen bechatzar nizik pays nizik shalom even if he's a Tam. So the last two answers are both speaking around. The first answer he says, how does this mission work? I have the tochem misham chatsi kofer. Ah, he's a tam. So one answer is no, he's a mu'e. That whenever he sees food in a pit, he falls in there. So he's a mu'e for that. He didn't kill intentionally, so he's not killed. But he's a mu'e for that. And because he's a mu'e for Shane in this case. The other two answers are no, I mean, it's a tam. It's a tam. But either goes to the who says that tam pays half kofer. In this case, it didn't have to be in the chatzar nizik. It could have been anyway. Well, like Rashi Gulli says, but chatzar nizik, even if he's Karen, pays nizik shalim, and he pays kofer shalim. The Mishnah says, "Vim nifnas b'shus v'al chatzar chayv." Itmar. Rav says, "Hilchus katana kama." Shmuel says, "Hilchus kavebi." We go like Shmuel. Hilchus like Rebbe. What was the machlok between Rebbe and and the Tana Kama in our Mishnah? When a man says, "Yeah, could bring your shore into my property," doesn't mean bring it in there, but I'm not going to guard it. That's Rebbe Shik. Rebbe says. Unless I specifically say I'm going to guard it, you bring it in, you bring it in at your risk. You got to take responsibility. According to the Tanakhama, no, bring it in means I'll watch it. Rob says, 
Bring your shore in. Vishamro, guard it. Shimro, guard it. You guard it. So here's a chayiv. If your animal, Reuben's animal, came into Shimon's property, did damage, he's chayiv. Reuben has to pay. Who's a potter? If Shimon's, if Reuben's animal got hurt, the trespasser got hurt, your potter. The owner he can't hold the responsibility because they said you could bring your shore in, but I'm not responsible for it. If you say, bring your shore in and I'll guard it, ah, then who's a chayiv? If it's damaged, then the owner has to the uh the balachots or the owner of the field or the chasr has to pay, that would be Shimo. Hizik Potter. And if the animal did damage, Reuben's animal did damage, Reuben doesn't have to pay because Shimon said, bring it in and I'll watch it, I'll guard it. So the Gmar says, Amr for the first case, he said, Shamar, you watch it. Hizik Chayev, Hizik Huzik Potter. Time and Amalai Shamar, because he said, the owner, the balachotzer said to the balashor, you watch it. The Chayi Balashor. Why? Because he said, "You watch it." Shimon is a Chayi Balashor. Time it Amalei Shimon. You watch it. The Chayi Balashor. Put the Balachotzer. Hastam. If they didn't say anything, he says, "Bring your shore in." Now, oh, bring. Uh, you can bring your shore in. He didn't say you guard it. He didn't say I'll guard it. Mash Bastam Chayi Balachotzer. Put the Balashor. The Bastam Kabel Tzuras. The Bastam Zayi Kabel Tzuras. That goes like the Rabbah. Aim a safer. The safer says, "Can I show Chabad Niashmer?" I'll guard it. Who's a Chayi? Is a Potter? Because the owner said, I'll, I'll guard it. So uh, the owner of the of the shore is Potter. Time it Omer vanished because he said, I'll guard it. Who the Machai Balachotzer Potter Balashor? Because the owner said, I'll take care of it. Hostam Machai Balashor Potter Balachotzer. The Vestam Melokon is the rest of the stuff. The Rashi is Mashman Astam. The owner, the Balachotzer takes responsibility. And the safest Mashman that the Balashor takes responsibility. Also, it goes like Rabbi Damarachi Kabbalah Balabaya said to Rusa, Lishmore to guard it. As a ratio of one of a safe Rebbe, the ratio goes like Ravana Sev goes like Rebbe. Amr um, Blazer Tabra Mishra son of the Uri. It's broken. It's Akasha. Whoever learned the first one didn't learn the second one. Whereas the ratio goes like Ravana and the safe goes like Rebbe. Rebbe says no. Kula Ravana. The whole thing goes like the Ravana who say that if I say bring your shore into my rishus, I'm accepting full responsibility. I'll take care of it. Make sure it doesn't get damaged. Make sure it doesn't do any damage. Kula Ravana. I do not have ratio. Shimus existent. The ratio says. You guard it. Or if you guard it, you're responsible. But if I just say, bring it in, I guard it. So since over there, I mean, I'll, if, if I tell you to guard it, you have to guard it. But if I if I don't say anything, I'll guard it. So because the ratio said there, Shimru, to show that if you don't say anything, I'll guard it. Can I say also by Nishmarin and I'll guard it? But the truth is, he didn't have to say in the Sefer, I will guard it. Because in the Sefer Stam, if I say Stam, uh, uh, bring it in, it means I will guard it. Rapapa Makula Rebbe, it all goes like Rebbe who holds him in a stam, you never guard it. If a guy says, Come into my yard, you know, you, I'm not going to guard it. You, it's, it's your responsibility. Like we just had before, Taphan holds that a Karen in the Chatzar of a Nizik, if he damaged with his, uh, with his Karen, meaning he did it intentionally, pays Nizik Shalim. Hilkach, Amr Leishim, if he says, You guard it, Lamak Lamakam Chatzar. You guard it. You can bring your animal in, but uh, you, you have no, you're, you, you don't have uh, full rights over here. You have to guard it. So, Karen Bechazer Nizik, Karen Bechazer Nizik, Mishal Nizik Shalmi has to pay the full amount. That's what he says, you're Meaning, if I say, bring your animal to my Rishus, but you have to guard it. It means this is not, this, you're not free to roam over here like it's my, like it's yours. You're not a Shutaf over here. You're in my Chazer. You better watch it. Okay. And if the animal does any damage, even if it's a Tom, Pays Nezik Shalom, you have to pay. Lo Amalei Shimru, if you didn't say Shimru, Akni Akni Makav, I just said, bring it in. Bring it in. I mean, bring it in. I didn't give you anything. Bechatzar, Avalei Chatzar Shutfen, right? I just said, bring it in. I said, Chatzar Shutfen, Karen Bechatzar Shutfen, Ein Mashalom, Ela Chatzin Nezik, Pays Chatzin Nezik, meaning when the when the Brisa said in the Seifa, right? If he says Shimru in the Reish, he said Shimru, so you guard it. I'm not giving you anything. If you do any damage, you have to pay Nezik Shalom. In the safer where he says that what that that he's a potter, if he said I'll guard it, right? Amrle safer said Shalom. Loma, if he didn't say Shalom, Rakne Akne, Makom Chatzer. In other words, in the in the ratio again, Rabbi says Kula Rabbi Yisrael Kav Tar from the Chesed Chatzer Ben Esim Shalom Nesim Hilkach. If he said Shimru, you guard it. I'm not giving you any permission over here, and your animal does damage. You have to pay Nesim Shalom. If he didn't say Shimru, Lo Amrle Shimru. Meaning, in the Sefer, he says, Ani Ashmerenu, right? I'll guard it, then I'm responsible. But if I didn't say that, if I didn't say you guard it, so effectively, I said, come into my Rishus. It's like, it's like your Rishus. 
and have the chutz rashutin. Karen be chutz rashutin. Ain't a mishama lechatzi nezik. The chutz rashutin is like rishus harab. We both have permission to be there. So if your animal does damage, Karen, Karen is a tom. Uh, Karen tom pays chatzin nezik. So when he said that in the in the uh, that when he did when he didn't take response when the owner didn't say I'll I'll guard it and he said just bring it in. What he really is saying is okay, you can be here with him, no problem, no problem. But I'm not responsible for it. But if you did damage, since I allowed you to come in, it's like chutz or shutpin or rishus harabim, and you pay chatzin nezik. So when he said your putz or putz doesn't mean you're totally putz or putz means your putz of nezik shalim, you still have to pay chatzin nezik. That's what Rashi says. Kula Rebbe, look at the Rashi right before the Mishnah near the bottom. Kula Rebbe, the safe adafka. Safe is adafka. He says, I will guard it. Yeah, then I'm responsible. Beresha, Beresha, lo tarik bina hastam ahuzak chayiv. The vadi stam anami is a chayiv. Huzak pata. The stam also, if he did, if Ruben's animal, the owner of the animal did damage, he has to pay. If he got damage, he's pata. But I didn't look at the shimru, but the yuban is a sholim. Tell me that if he, that if he did damage, pays as a sholim kamer. In huzak shor shabal lachatzer. Hastam a chatzin as stam if he wasn't if he wasn't uh, if he if he's hastam means if I didn't say you guard it I just said you can come into my rishus you can come into my rishus the safe is the if I said I'm going to guard it fine then I'm going to guard it but if I didn't say that I said shimru if I said shimru then you have to pay full full charges hastama you pay chatzin as stam means not that you're putter entirely you pay chatzin as because now you're a, a mazik in a, in a chaser of shutvin. We're both allowed to be there. I'm allowed to be there, and I said you can come in too. It's like we're both in Shisram, you pay Chasin Ezek. So, for Karen. For Karen, correct. We're talking about Karen. Shor Shehayu Meskavan Lechaver. Now, the mission, you know, the Pasik says if two guys were fighting, right? Mishnah in, in, in Shmos, we said, well, two people were fighting, and, um, and, uh, the, and uh, one of them hit the other guy's wife, and she lost the baby, all right? Veloya Asam. Right, and um, I also want to see if I have the pusik over here. Um, I don't think the pusik is right here. Let's see. No, this is talking about shore. I don't have the pusik in front of me. Okay, but in any case, the pusik says that pusik says that if two guys are fighting and one guy hits the other guy's wife and she loses the baby, he has to pay for the baby. What the baby's worth, he has to pay that to the owner, to the father, to the other guy. Okay. Of course, that's imlo yasom. If there is no, she's not killed. If she's killed, then come the rabbin, he doesn't have to pay because he killed them. He killed the mother. So here the mission says, what about by a shore? It says adam ish. If, if two people find ki natsu ki natsu anoshim yachdav, the hika and and the person uh, by mistake hit the other one's wife and she lost the baby, you have to pay for the baby if she wasn't killed. What about a shore? Shore shei miskavn lechaveru. Shor was planning, was, was had kavana to damage somebody. By mistake, he hit the woman. She lost a child. A shore doesn't have to pay for that. because If men are fighting, but if a shore was, was going after a man <coughs> to, to gore him, and by mistake, he gored the, the, his wife, the woman, and she lost the baby, you don't have to pay for that. But if a person did that, that's must be. Okay, that's the pussy. The chenish over here is that a shore does pays, the shore doesn't have to pay, only the man pays. In other words, obviously the shore doesn't pay. The owner of the shore doesn't pay if the shore damaged the woman and she lost her child. How do you pay the how do you How do you assess the value of the baby? Uh, you figure out how much was she worth if she would be sold on the market as a pregnant slave woman, how much would she be worth, say $125? And now without the baby, she's only worth $100. Because with the baby, she's maybe worth more because uh, you got another got another slave coming out of it, right? So, uh, so Mishim Mulil's opinion is going to be discussed in detail in the Gemara, but what he's saying is, as M. Cain, if that's the case, there wouldn't be paid anything because a woman who's not pregnant is worth more. When she's pregnant, there's a chance that she'll die in childbirth. It was very common in those days, right? Yeah. So he says, MK, what do you mean? What do you mean? You say, how much, figure how much a baby is worth. Well, if she's pregnant, she's worth a hundred and a quarter. If she's uh, not pregnant, she's only worth a hundred. So the baby's worth a quarter, just the opposite. MK, if that's, if that's how you're figuring, 
she shows she's worth more, so you won't get anything for the baby. And you just figure how much is a baby worth. Don't figure out how much is she worth more with the baby. She might be worth more without the baby because she's not going to die. And there's less of a chance of her dying. A woman and child, a woman pregnant in those days, good chance that she wouldn't make it. If she's if, if she had the baby naturally already, then you see she's alive. El Shaman said, Blood is coming. You figure out how much is the baby worth? The notes in the bottle. You just said, What is this baby? What is this baby worth on the market? What happens if she has no husband? Now the the uh, money, uh, the vlados belongs to the husband. That's what the Pasik says, belongs to him. So what happens if she has no husband? No, it goes to her, his, his yours. We had this uh, mission before. It goes to his heirs, not to hers. Not to hers, right? Say her husband died. I mean, we said before that if a, a husband inherits his wife, but here the husband's dead. And now let's say, and now uh, you have to pay for, now you damage the woman and you have to pay uh, the uh, the uh, Vlados, what the baby was worth, even to his heirs. How's the shift from Nishtachra, Ogioris, Petura? Let's say, says here, shift of Nishtachra, Ogioris, if she was a slave woman, or Ogioris, meaning she had no uh, she had no heirs, and we're speaking of where the husband also was a gear and had no children, because that's the whole point. There, there, there was nobody to give it to. But you don't have to pay, because who are you going to pay? The money belongs to the husband. The husband's dead and has no heirs. Then you get to keep the money yourself. It's like a gear who died and had no Yorshim, and you owe him money, you get to keep the money. Rashi says, uh, She's married to a gear or to a uh, freed slave. She has no husband now. Shemes, he's dead. Potter, Potter, the guy who had to pay is Potter. The damage of the Mazik is Potter. The Mazik, when I say Gare, Shemes, for Enlo Yorshin, Zoki gets to keep. Is that Kodomus Chosmashabiyadi gets to keep? I didn't know. In other words, wherever, if a Gare dies and there's no Yorshim, you can grab whoever grabs it, grabs it. And here, the Mazik has the money that he owes. He doesn't know it to anybody, he keeps it in his wallet. I didn't know. I listen. I used to ship from Shares of Lenok and I used to Shukreras. She was free. She was not a child. There's no children. I know the Kamar. I used to ship from an Ishtafur, the Mashma Atta. She's now free. There's, there's no children involved. So there's no heirs at all. Then the, then the mask gets to keep the money. So the Gemara says, gets time to the Meskav and the It says over here, it says, if he had Kavana, the shore had Kavana to hit the man, to, to, to gore the man. And by mistake, he gore, he hurt the woman and she lost the child. Meskav and the Chabayro. How Meskav and the Isha? It's not if he had Kavana for the Isha. Meshavna, you would pay to my blados because it says, I'm a scavin, short of a scavin, a chaver, and he hit them. So you don't have to pay for the baby. It's not if he had Kavana to hit the woman directly. You, you wouldn't have to pay, you, you would have to pay for the blados. Lame and tap gifted Ravada Barava, Sakashra Ravada, Dama Ravada Barava, Shvaram, Shinnescavnu, the Isha. If oxen had Kavana or shore had Kavana for a woman, to hurt a woman, Tumba de Vlados, even if it Kavana, Amalah Ravada Barava, who had enough feeling the scavin, the Isha, Nami Ptorm. The debate blotters. In the Mishnah, it does not mean to exclude the case where the animal had kavana, had specific intention to hurt the woman. Even if he had kavana, the reason he's talking about having kavana for a man and he hit the woman, I did to the Mr. Safe, since the safe is going to talk about a human being, a man, a Jew. That's what the Pasuk's talking about. Two people were fighting and he had kavana to hit the man and he hit his wife and she lost the baby. So talking about an animal. The truth is an animal never has to pay David Vladas whether you had kavana for the woman or not. Omar Papa. Shore that gored a shifcha, not a Jewish woman, and she lost the baby. It's simply a, a, a shifcha woman who's pregnant is like a donkey that's pregnant. You damaged my property. Shifcha belongs to property. Not talking about a woman. A Jewish woman who was damaged by a shore, you don't have to pay for the blood, so it's excluded. Only men, or only people have to pay, not shore. But if a shore hurt your shifcha, shifcha is your property, it's your chateau, right? Belongs to you. So if there you would have to pay for my time of Hamas of Alma, so it's simply a uh, pregnant donkey. That's what he's really damaged. We know the famous Pasik that uh, Avram said to them, Amadom al Khamor. We said the uh, Eliezer, stay with the uh with the Khamor. Amadom al Khamor, a, a, a nation which is like the Khamor. There we talk about he has no yachas, but that's the same thing over here. Kate Mashal Dumas, how do you pay Vlados? Says more the May Vlados, Shvach Vlados Mulay. What about the May Vlados? It's not just the May Vlados, what is worth more. Actually, the woman is worth more too, because uh, she's uh, healthy, you know, she looks big and strong and uh, carrying, she's carrying. 
so she's worth more also. Because now that she's lost the baby, not only she lost the value of the baby, but she also is worth, she's worth less because she's not a strong, stout woman who can, who can carry a child. That's what it means. Right? How much do you pay for the blood itself and for the shvach of the blood? So there the mission said, you figure out what she was worth before when she was pregnant, what she was worth now, and that's the difference that you pay to the to the Baal, to the husband. You figure how much she's worth before she gave up the Kamiyafa Mishiyolda. So Shim Mulil said in Cain, Misha Isha Yoleda is Mishabechas. If that's the case, you wouldn't pay anything. Because after she gives birth, she's actually worth more. Because now she survived the the uh, she survived the uh, birth. That's a big thing, because when she's pregnant, we don't know. Says my comma. What is what is what do you mean by Rabshim Muli? Also, Rabshim Muli just as him came, she shows him Shabcha. Why? Am Rabbach come? But he should be Shabbachas Karm Shetel Yosim Yachshed. He disagrees with the whole concept. You say that uh, she's worth more when she's pregnant, both in terms of the baby and in terms of that she's she's worth more that she she's bigger and stronger and heavier, etc. She's worth more in the market. Um, just the opposite. But he should be Shabbachas Karm Shetel. Do you think she's worth more before before she gives birth than after? Uh, she's worth more afterwards. Ella is with why because she survived. Ella shaman as a bloodos for nos in the bow. And what he means is this, like that's what that's what Shimuel said in the Mishnah, the top line. And came she she Ella shaman as a bloodos. All you do is you give the value of the baby to the husband. She's worth actually more afterwards. Tanya nami hoch. We have a bride select from Shimuel. So he isha mishabechas kodem shetel yosim yishach shetel. You think she's worth more before than afterwards? She's worth more afterwards. You figure out what the baby's worth, but no the bow. Okay, so that's the simple shot that we have machlokas here between the Tanakama and Shem Ulil. Is she worth more before? And that's the difference that you pay, or is she worth after? If she's worth more after. You can't say, oh, she's damaged now. She's worth more afterwards because she doesn't have the baby anymore. No chance of her dying. LMI, what do you do? You just figure out what the baby's worth. Rav Amar, Rav says no. When Rav Shimon asked the Kashi, he meant this. He says, do you think is only good for, for, for her husband? And she's not worth more? She's Her body's worth more too. Don't forget the shame and all the other stuff that you go directly to her. The play goes to the, to the uh, husband. But all but her own body that goes to her damage her own body goes to her. Right, you whatever the baby's worth, you give that to The shvach velados. What about the fact that she is worth more when she's pregnant because she's been bigger and stronger, etc. How can you split that? Split that between the husband and her. You figure out what she is worth, the, the damage done to her by itself, and her pain that she was caused by the by the um, by the goring, by you know, by by her being hit. The shaman as a and you figure out the blood, but the ball and give that to the ball. The shvach blados choken, and you split the shvach blados. What is the fact that she's worth more? The fact that she was worth more pregnant, you split that. This is Kashmir You didn't say that before. This is Kash between the two. Before you right, before Shmuel says that she's worth less. Now you say that she's you get the shvach lo kasha. Kam vakeres, kam b'shein vakeres. Here's the point: when Shmuel said she's worth more after than not, that's for the first time she because the first time she got pregnant, a better, better chance that she, a better chance that we don't know that she's going to be able to bear the child and uh, and uh, give birth properly. So then you say she's worth more unpregnant than pregnant. But over here, when she's not in the care, so it's not she's got giving birth for the first time. She's given birth already several times. So then she is worth more afterwards. She is worth more pregnant. She's improved, right? Because now, uh, now you know that she could carry a child to term and she won't die in childbirth. All right. Um, so Nigamar goes on. We'll pick it up from here tomorrow. Mr. Shemwe goes on. There's not really a good place to stop here. We'll pick it up from this the peach sheet of Shemuel again tomorrow. From the, we'll start with again for the Tain Nami Hockey and explain from Shemuel and the Rabbanan. And tomorrow is Thursday. It's a short day. And Friday, remember, we start at 6 because Friday is fast day. Have a good day, everybody.
Yeah, beautiful. Thank you.